here today. It is so good to be here on Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, I personally feel grateful and thankful that I get to be among you all and be part of what God is doing here at Griner Church. And it's just great to see you again today. And God just put on my heart during worship that I'm also grateful for the children that we have here today. Alex, would you grab your sisters? And Jaden, would you grab your sisters and come forward, please? Could you do that? <clears throat> come. <clears throat> Jaden, you want to come? You bring your sisters with you. We're going to sing a song up here. Come. You in the back. <laughs> yes, hon, you want to come up and help him sing Jesus Loves Me? Come. Come here, Alex. Come all the way over here. Yep, come over here. Come over here. Yeah, come right here. We're going to, we're going to sing a song, okay? You want to sing a song? Yeah? No, okay. I want to sing. You don't want to sing? Okay, then we'll just look pretty up here, okay? Well, Jaden, you going to sing? No? Okay. All right. I come up here. Me this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Okay, let's give them a hand. Thank you, children. Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And I want to hear from a few of you what you are thankful for today. Okay? Who wants to be first? We just sang many songs of being thankful. Amen? So, yeah. Here. <clears throat> Thank you for my family and friends. You. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful for you as well, Sharon. <laughs> Amen. Dennis? I'm, I'm thankful for the fellowship we can have with the Lord. And yes. Also for the uh, blessings that our friends and family have for us. So. Amen. Amen. Thankful for friends and family and fellowship in the Lord. Do you ever think of what it would be like without fellowship in the Lord? Oh. Brother Wayne. Good morning, everybody. Morning. I'm, I'm thankful for uh, the gift of salvation through Jesus, and that He's the one that pursues us. Not like well, we can pursue Him, but He pursues us and wants to, you know, fellowship with us. And that, I'm thankful for that. That God doesn't give up on, on us. Even when we gave up on ourselves. Amen. Because he's the reason that we praise him. I mean, because it's his love to us. I just, it's awesome. Amen. Thank you. The love of Christ. Praise God. Rochelle? Are you thankful for something? <laughs> Probably Pastor Dan, right, Jaden? <laughs> um, I'm just thankful for that um, that we have the ability to um, love Jesus and to worship him and I am thankful for not only my children but our family and for a place to come and have more relationships with people that are friends and family Amen Amen, thank you <laughs> All right, anyone else? Yes, get up and speak. The Holy Spirit and his plan of salvation and his, his faithfulness and his goodness. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
I also am thankful for all the things that have been mentioned. Um, thankful for a godly husband and thankful for probably most of all for uh, Jesus and what he's done yeah. for us and his word and yeah, just so many things to be thankful for. And I'm also thankful for Florida. <laughs> well, Nina's also thankful for Florida. Praise God. We all are, aren't we? If we could go there a little more <laughs> frequently in the wintertime. Pastor Robert, <clears throat> yes, thankful for so many things. If you're ever in a third, third world country, you understand what, what uh, the, the blessing that God has on this land. It's just, it's just amazing. I'm thankful for uh, family and for yeah. his grace, yes, for redemption, um, that some missionaries spoke somewhere years ago to a group of heathen in Germany, and my ancestors were among <laughs> them that got saved. Wow. wow. And I'm thankful for the wow. message of salvation yes. and redemption that he's given me and, and our family. Amen. We've had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I just praise God. For so many things. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful too for a godly heritage for my yes. parents and grandparents and um, just the blessing that they have passed down through generations. And yeah, God is so good. And I want to continue to pass that on to my children and grandchildren. Amen. And I'm thankful for them. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm thankful for parents who are honorable. Yes. Um, in Sunday school, I was just, I had to think about where I might be if God didn't give me the parents that he did. And so I'm thankful for that. And Wow. Um, I want to also pass that on to my children. And yeah. Wow. Amen. Godly parents and pass that on to the children. Anyone over here? Above? Well, I, too, am grateful for family, for all of my children and granddaughter, and for a godly husband who knows how to walk in the Spirit, and who hears from the Lord, and who keeps us all in the straight and narrow. <laughs> um, one thing I learned through my dad's passing was um, the importance of just being present, and so I'm thankful to you. And I was reminded of this in one of the songs today of just being in the presence of the Lord. I'm so thankful that he's not given up on me and that um, he poked and prodded and did what he needed to do to get my attention so that I could come to the grace and to salvation and I am able to have that present, be in his presence, and um, just wow. the, the feeling of home that it brings to me. Like I said something about home this morning to someone, and as we were singing the one song, I just thought, in the presence of God is where home really is. Everything yes. else in the world does not matter. Yes. But just being in his presence. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. Arlene? Welcome home, by the way. <laughs> yes. I'm extremely thankful for protection and traveling. I uh, was up in Wisconsin for, for Thanksgiving, and we just had a wonderful, wonderful time there. Did a lot of traveling around and did some shopping up there, and Anyway, we had a good time, and, and I'm just so thankful for, for family. Yes, amen, right in front of you. Okay, I am very thankful for family, for get-togethers, and we had an abundance of food. We wow. never run short of food. Isn't that yeah. amazing? We are very blessed. Yes. But I am also so, so thankful that the Lord is our solid rock in the midst of the chaotic world we live in. Yes, amen. Amen. Well, good morning, Mary. How are you? Good. Anyone else? 
while we're back here. <laughs> yes, Vance. Thank you. Amen to everything that was mentioned in this day. I'm grateful that above all, Jesus is enough. Amen. I'm thankful for the callings of the Lord on each of our lives. In these future days, he is in the process of raising up volunteers to serve in the house of the Lord without a position, without a face, without earthly return. So, Lord, I just thank you that we will receive your giftings and use them to give back to you in your house. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, thank you. Thank you for that. Thankful for the Lord to have where you're at without a position or a title, yet, Lord, God is using the gifts that he has given you. Praise God. Amen. Anyone else? Brother Simon? James, you're next. <laughs> you can come forward. You can just... I'm thankful for friends and family, and especially for you all. Thankful for Griner. Um, yeah, like what everybody said. Christ, Amen. Christ the main, main thing. And I'm also thankful that God made turkeys so we could eat them. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Earlier this week, I sent a picture of him. I don't know if you all seen that where the turkey is looking at the thermometer and it says 350 degrees and above his head says, this can't be right. (laughs) We love turkey, don't we, brother? (laughs) I'm thankful for for, uh, the father sending his son to die die for us that we can have a relationship for him amen with him yes and all these years he pursued us and i'm thankful that he kept on going after me and that he chose me to be a child of god amen and uh (laughs) that that's just so exciting for me that he would choose me out of all all of my siblings to be the first one to come to Christ. Wow. And it, it's just amazing <laughs> Praise that God, God would choose. Praise God. Choose us. Hand. Amen. And if anyone knows the story, I believe you're Old Order Amish, is that right? Yes. Yeah, Old Order Amish. And, and God came down in the midst of that and saved her. <laughs> and we're grateful for that. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, you surely have something to be thankful for. If nothing else, the lady to your left, I mean. (laughs) I guess I would say I'm thankful for, like, um, the family that I have. Yes. You know, being able to be adopted into a really good family. And then I'd also thankful for the Lord because no matter how many times we mess up and go through this life, no one's perfect, you know. He will always forgive us and Amen. stuff like that. And so I'm definitely thankful for that. And yeah, Amen. Just thankful for the time off of work to spend with family and friends. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for that, James. I kind of put you on the spot, didn't I? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> Amen. And you too? Mickey wants to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm thankful for Jesus and all he has done for his faithfulness and his goodness and love. I'm thankful for Griner. Amen. Um, I'm thankful for my friends. I'm thankful for James. Yeah. I'm thankful for, um, yeah, just all the, just his goodness and Amen. how he just orchestrates things. Yeah. Praise God. God seems to know what he's doing, doesn't he? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We love that. We are, yes, so happy for you too. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Loretta, yes. (laughs) 
do my shuffle. There you go. I am thankful for all the things I have heard you guys say, but most of all for Jesus. And then all those little blessings we take for granted so much, like soap and water, hot water for showers. and Yeah. There are just endless blessings that God sends our way that we don't, we don't really deserve because most people in the world don't have them. So I am grateful for all those little things. Amen. Thank you, Loretta, so much. Don't know how thankful you are for hot water until you got to stand under a cold shower a couple times, huh? Ugh. <laughs> Amen. Anyone else? John? Amen. Amen. Can you say that over the, over the, <laughs> I was just saying that one of the songs in the, a line in the song says, my heart has found a home. I was pretty thankful for that. That, that song this morning was really touching. Wow. Uh, I need you more. Yeah. I mean that, if you're not, uh, if you are not touched during that song, you have issues. <laughs> I, yeah. I was just really touched by that song this morning. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. I need you more. Anybody here? Bond triggers? You're fine? You're thankful, Barb? <clears throat> I'm very thankful for uh, family and friends and uh, life and breath and the snow. Yes. <laughs> and the snow. Praise God. Amen. Chris is looking at you like he can't believe you just said that. <laughs> Brother Steve? Yeah, anybody in the sound booth as well? Raya, you're not exempt or Christian. First of all, I praise God and I thank him for the love that he's given to us. Amen. Unabounding love, unconditional love that he's given to us no matter what. I also want to thank you as a church. Because when one person is down, when one person is going through a hard time or going through a struggle, you surround that person and you lift them up. Wow. And you help them. And I thank you for that. I've gone through a couple struggles here this, this summer, and you've all been here for me, encouraging Amen. me and building me up. Thank you. Wow. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, absolutely. When one of us is hurting, all of us are, and so we rally around. God bless you, Steve. Thank you. Anyone else? Raya? Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Raya, for sharing that. <clears throat> you look up in the Word, and throughout the Word, it talks about continually giving thanks. Give thanks in what? All things. Everything. It just doesn't mean when things are going good, amen? But we give thanks in all things. Correct, Martha. Grandma Martha. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Sometimes it's a little difficult for myself, depending on what we're going through in life, it's a little more difficult to get on your knees and thank the Lord for what you're actually going through. But what I've figured out or found out or maybe what the Lord tried to teach me through those times was that He wanted to teach me something through difficult times. And if we can be thankful for that and thankful that God teaches us every one of us in different ways, and we can uh, be thankful in all things, no matter what we go through. And so we were going to get into the Word here this morning for um, 
some time. I would like to close this, the service then in that song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. I think you might have sang that one already. Is that right? Yeah? Could we, could we cl close in singing that then? You would be okay with that? Yeah? Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. And so this morning, let's go into Ephesians chapter 5, um, where we were at. And the very first part of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, is where I want to go with to start with. Um, go with to start with. In verse 8, it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of of light. And that very first part of verse 8, I am so grateful to know and understand that I was once in darkness, yet God came down and saved me. And we've we've some of us have testified of this very thing, but if you go into if you go into Genesis chapter 1, the very first verse. Okay? Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Here the earth was without form and void, and there was darkness. And then you look at this first part of chapter, eight, uh, verse 8 here, it says, For you were once darkness. We were all born into this world... As sinners, anyone sitting here, can anyone remember as a child or anyone that has children, did we ever have to teach them how to lie? <laughs> did we ever have to teach them how to cry? Ever have to teach them how to throw fits or misbehave? Or start squabbling with siblings? Or fighting? We didn't ever have to teach them that, did we? Because that's what we were born into. That's why the Word of God is quite clear that you must be born again. The second born, you must be born again. Once we were in darkness, once we were in darkness, yet God came out and saved us miraculously by what? Sending His Son to this earth and He walked among men and He died for you and I that we could be children of Children of light. And you look at this part, if we are called to be children of light, what are we doing to display the light of God? What are you doing in a daily lifestyle that shows that you are a child of the light and not of darkness anymore? And I looked at this verse, it was a sobering thought to me that this is a lifestyle. This isn't just a Sunday to Sunday, but this is a lifestyle that God is asking us as His children is to walk in His light. And it doesn't matter what happens in your life or what circumstance that you come against, God says you are a child of the light. God says that you are in the light if you are here born again. If you are not born again you're still in darkness. And you're void and without form. You're still in darkness if you're sitting here and have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. There is still darkness that is within you. And there is darkness there. But he says, now that you have given our heart, you are a light, walk as children of the light. And I love this word, walk. It doesn't say run. It doesn't say sprint, but we understand that the walk of life is a walk. It's not, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So that's why Paul is asking us to have perseverance and continue to walk steady, continue to walk faithful, continue to walk where God has called us to walk. Let's not get all Let's not get hunches and start running here and running there and running everywhere, but walk Faithfully walk consistently of where God has called us to be. This is the walk in the Christian life that God has called us to be. And yes, I love how James has said it this morning. He said, it doesn't matter how bad we mess up, God is always there for us, isn't he? 
Sometimes when we walk out of the way of him, he's still there with his arms open and he wants us to come back. He wants us to come back to his heart. And he sees your heart and he's asking us to walk in the light for him. And it says, for the fruit of the spirit is all goodness and righteousness. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 22, the fruit of the spirit is this. Where am I at? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Can I find it? There it is. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Verse 10, finding out what is acceptable to to the Lord. And as we walk in light with Him, the Lord is saying, find out what is acceptable to Him and not man. What is acceptable to God? And we look at Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Do not be conformed to this world. And when this, what is happening here in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Paul is saying, do not let your mind be conformed to what is happening in the world. And as I look at what is happening into the world, if there's not anything happen, there's this new agey Christianity that's out there that tries to deceive us and get us wrapped in to what is happening there. There's a spirit behind it, but it's not the Holy Spirit. He's saying, do not be conformed to the things of this world, but let your mind be renewed. But let your mind be renewed. But, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what that is good and acceptable, perfect will of God. And when we find out what the perfect, acceptable will of God is, we are walking in the light with Him and we are in the presence of Him and we understand the heart of the Father. If we are doing things that are not acceptable unto the Lord, you are still in darkness. If we are walking as darkness, we are not being accepted by the Lord. Of what, and that is what the Word of God is saying here. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no, verse 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. It says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Or in other words, have no fellowship with those that are in continual sin. When I, when I was at home, mom and dad, dad would always tell me, and he would tell me and tell me, he would, he would warn me to be with a certain group of people that would continually go drink, they continually go party, they continually smoke weed, they'd get high, they'd be on drugs. And dad would look at me and say, Dan, you have to understand that you are who you hang out with. That is who you are. That is what's inside of you. He said, don't have anything. He didn't put him in this word terms, but as I look back then, in other words, what he was saying is, I don't approve of you hanging out with them because they are in sin and they will get you there with them. And it's right. He says, don't have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Don't have fellowship with the unfruitful works of sin that continually tries to bind us and deceive us away from what is holy and acceptable unto God. And as I look what's happening in the world, the deception that is out there is just alarming. As you look at 
the deception that is happening to try to pull us into, into different different unfruitful works of darkness. It is very key, it is very important that we stay in the Word of God and know the heart of the Father and what He is saying for His people at this time. That we don't have fellowship with the works of darkness, with the unfruitful works of darkness. But it says, rather expose them. How do we do that as Christians? Rather expose them. He says, don't have fellowship with them, but rather expose them. And then when you expose them, all we hear is, well, you can't judge. Why are you judging me? And why do you think you're so much better than me? You're just a goody tissue. And you, have we all heard this? But instead of having fellowship with them, we are to expose them of what's happening. And how do we do that graciously? It's only by the love of the Father, knowing what is acceptable to Him, that them think that that the the fruits of the of the darkness, the unfruitful works of darkness, get exposed. And a few of those examples. If there's gossip happening, if there's backbiting happening, Paul is saying to expose it. And when we're in that setting and there's gossip happening or there's backbiting going against certain people, I've noticed that if you already offer, said, hey, can we just pray for you? It just kind of, it just, it doesn't happen anymore. Instead of fellowshipping with that very thing, and it's one of the biggest divisive things that happens in a family in a church, is gossip, backbiting, and talking down about everybody else. We, we, we spend more time talking down and ba- gossip and backbiting than we do even in the Word of God. It says to expose these things rather than to have fellowship with the unfruitful darkness that tries to deceive us and get us away. And I look at <laughs> the unfruitful works of darkness. You could continue to go on with some of the things that we deal with of just daily things, but we will, we will continue here. For it is shameful, verse 12, but it says rather to expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light and I looked at verse 13 here all things that are exposed those sins that are done in secret the sins that we commit that we think are done in secret someday they will be exposed by the light Someday when we stand in front of God in all His glory, everything that we've ever done here on this earth will be exposed. Whether you want to try to keep it secret now or not, it will be exposed. It will be made manifest by the light, which means it will be made known. It will come to life. It will will come alive. And so when we... (laughs) I dealt with this thing we call secret sin for seven, eight years, held a secret, saying that I would never, I would never, I would never tell anyone what I was involved in. It would ruin my reputation. I would lose my family. I, I, I believed in all these lies. And, and, and I told them that I would not, and I even made a commitment 
I made a commitment to the enemy, the devil himself, that I was going to keep this a secret and I would never, ever, ever tell anyone. It was done in secret. Until one day a man of God that came in full of the Holy Ghost and power and it was made manifest to him. It came to light to him what I was involved in. And through him there was complete freedom. And I was miserable those, those years of keeping that secret sin. It's going to be exposed one way or another. It will be exposed. If we think that we can keep it a secret, it will be exposed one day or another. Sister Vanger, are you going to help sing the closing song? If, if you are, you can come, come up right now then. Thank you. And so this morning in wrapping, in wrapping this up, I know we're kind of time crunch, which is fine. And we have family this afternoon, and all of you all have family as well. But I felt like God wanted me to share this part of Scripture with you all and just to remind us and to put it in front of us. What are we really thankful for this year? What are we really thankful for what God has done with us this year? And be children of the light and walk as we are children in the light. That's what He is calling us to be. And to be thankful in all things. To be thankful in everything that He has given us. And everything that we are, family, friends, parents, everything that was spoken of this morning. I praise God. I praise God for every one of you all and what God is doing here. He's... <laughs> walking us through a season. Sometimes I don't understand. I'll be the first to admit, I don't always understand what God is, what God is doing here or where He's leading us, but I am. I always try to say that I am thankful for what God is doing and where He's taking us. I'm very grateful, very thankful of where God has us and, and He's here. And so if we could just all stand at this time, we'll sing this song um, in closing. And then Pastor Robert, if you want to have a closing prayer then, and, uh, and again, remember, next Sunday we're having communion at 9.30. So if you don't are in a normal Sunday school, please be here at 9.30. I'm looking so forward to that. Okay? Please be here at 9.30 so we can have communion. Then we'll have regular service as well. Oh, God, my Father.
Amen. 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 Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I just, uh, yeah, I praise the Lord. What a beautiful morning. I want to thank Pastor Dan for the message. You know, I, I was reflecting too, even as we were singing this, great is his faithfulness to every one of us. And I, I am so grateful that we can still serve here and minister in this family as well. I'm very grateful for Pastor Dan and Ada, for God bringing them, and Christian and Jeremiah and Amber, well, the whole family. But anyway, thank you. Um, let's pray. Father God, thank you for your great faithfulness. Thank you, God, that you're greater than every, every lie of the enemy. You're greater than every, every attack and every opposing work that came against anyone. God, you're greater. Great is your faithfulness. God, even when the world shook, great is your faithfulness. And so today we worship you and we say thank you for your great faithfulness. Thank you for the light that you placed within us and shines in the darkness. And God, as we go from here, may we be carriers of the light, sharing the love of Christ wherever we go. We pray your blessing on each one. May your peace rest upon each heart. And may your name be glorified in Jesus, we pray. God bless you. Amen. Let's depart in peace.